This is Gauzar, the self-proclaimed physics detective. Today, I'm taking a closer look at Disney's Tangled. In particular, I want to answer the question, how much hair does Rapunzel have? One of the difficulties in answering this question is that her hair seems to be inconsistent, appearing to grow and shrink from scene to scene. That being said, I contend that her hair is always at least long enough to serve as a rope ladder for the tower in which she lives. So, all we have to do is figure out how tall the tower is. Let's get started. To begin, we'll figure out how tall Rapunzel is. And to do this, we're of course going to use physics. More specifically, we're going to use Newton's first, and second, laws of motion. Here's how it works. Newton's first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon. And similarly, an object at rest will stay at rest unless also acted upon. In other words, stationary objects have to be set in motion by something, and more importantly for the discussion at hand, moving objects will continue moving in the same direction, and at the same speed, forever, unless something else interferes. For instance, if you throw a ball, it constantly changes direction because of the influence of gravity. When you shove a box, it comes to a stop because of friction. Next, we have Newton's second law of motion, which states that the sum of forces acting on an object is equal to the product of the mass and acceleration of the object. In other words, the manner in which the speed and or direction of an object will change is dependent on the forces acting on the object and the mass that it has. For example, consider an airplane during takeoff. First, its speed increases because the engines provide enough thrust to overcome friction. Second, it leaves the ground because the wings provide enough lift to overcome gravity. So having talked about Newton's laws, let's put them to use. There's a scene in the movie where Rapunzel swings around a tree by her hair. Newton's first law tells us that she's going in a circle because something is influencing her motion. In this case, it's the tension in her hair that keeps her going around in a circle. Second, since she's not moving up or down, Newton's second law tells us that the tension in her hair is also counterbalancing her weight. Knowing that her hair is both supporting her weight and keeping her in a circle, we can figure out her height if we know the angle that her hair is pointing at and the relative size between her height and the radius of the circle that she is spinning in. After a fair bit of algebra, we arrive at an estimate of 5 feet 5 inches. Now that we know how tall she is, we can compare her to Mother Gothel and find that she is roughly 5'11". Next, we compare Mother Gothel to the tower and find that it's 77 feet long. Now that's a lot of hair, but let's take things one step farther. Knowing how long her hair is, and taking into account how many hairs the average person has, how big around the average hair is, and how dense human hair is, we can figure out how much her hair weighs. The number of hairs varies from person to person, but most research in this area concludes that, on average, people have between 100,000 and 150,000 hairs. The diameter of hair can also vary widely, and depends on hair color. One study by Kaisley, Wen, Sa'ad, and Elbert found the average hair to have a diameter between 60 and 80 micrometers. Lastly, a study by Leder and Bunkel found that the density of hair is 1.31 times that of water, putting it at just over 1300 kilograms per meter cube. Putting all this together gives a final result of 14.2 kilograms, or 31 and a quarter pounds. Personally, I found the result to be about what I expected, or maybe a little bit lower than what I had imagined. But what about you? Were you expecting her hair to be longer or shorter than it is? What about lighter or heavier? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that's all I have for you today. So, in closing, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you'd like to say you're welcome back, you could always like this video and subscribe to my channel. Subscribing has many benefits, but arguably one of the biggest is being notified when I post videos. For example, you'll be notified when my next video about the destructive capabilities of the Death Star hits YouTube. 
If you're interested, you can stay up to date on my current projects by following me on Facebook and Twitter. Well, once again, this is Gauzar, signing off.